Hey Gold Diggers, I'm Steve Nash. And I'm Antonella, and this is our review of Cavum. Hey, you know, if you rearrange the letters, you can come up with vacuum. How convenient, coming from the dirt devil herself. Cavum is a tile game that involves a lot of strategy. The game is played pretty quickly in only three rounds. Within those three rounds, you'll be able to do 12 actions. In the box, you'll get a board which represents the mountains and all its surrounding towns, tiles which are used to form the tunnels, tokens that represent different actions, wooden blocks which represent your factories, vein tiles where you'll find your gems, and order cards which you'll try to complete to get victory points. To set up the game, each player receives an action board and chooses a color. They get the blocks of that color and a token of each of the 12 actions on that board. The board is also used as a great player summary card, written in four languages on both sides. On the board, you'll place the starting tunnels on the given spots. The gems will also go into their own areas, except for the yellow ones which go in the middle of the mountain. Place the player turn tokens on their spots. There is also a buy area on the board where you'll place factories, veins, tiles, and dynamite. Each player places their score marker on the number 15 of the score track. Shuffle the order cards and flip over five of them. A round is made up of three phases. In the first phase, players will bid on being the first to choose what order they will play in. Players bid their victory points, and the winner can choose whichever order token they want. According to the order you choose to play in, you'll also get a dynamite tile matching that token. Players continue bidding until they each have an order number. The player with the lowest number will go first and choose an order card from the five that were flipped. Once bidding is done, players move on the second phase of the round, which is doing actions. During the action phase, players can do one to four of the actions on their board. For example, the number one player will go first and he decides to place two tiles and a factory. He now did three action and says pass. The player with number two now does one to four actions and so on. Using the actions you have on your board, players are trying to build a straight connecting tunnel from one factory to another while passing over veins of gems to pick those gems up. Let me explain the actions you can do. The tunnel tiles are simply to build tunnels. You can also place a tunnel tile on top of another tile as long as the new tile has more exits on it. If you play a vein tile, you can choose the color of the gems and place four of those gems on the vein. You can play factories on towns or on tiles that are at level one, meaning you can't place a factory on a stack of two tiles. The option token allows you to take anything from the buy pool and use it. For example, you can take a tunnel tile or take a factory, or a vein, or even a dynamite tile and place it. The dynamite token will explode at the end of the round, taking with it all the empty tunnel tokens surrounding it. The last action is the final action. When you do this action, you are telling other players that you are done and you're waiting for them. Once everyone has played the last action token, the phase ends and you move on to the final phase. The final phase is basically scoring points, selling gems, and exploding dynamite. So if you can connect two factories with three veins in between, you can pick up one gem from each of those veins. Once each player has collected their gems, you now score points for cities. If you have a factory in a city, which is connected to a factory inside the mountain, you win factory points for each empty spot in that town. Starting with yellow and going clockwise, players bid on selling gems. The player who bids the lowest number can sell that gem to the store for that number of victory points. For example, if you have a blue gem and the number 8 is showing on the board, you can sell it for 8 points, but another player can sell it for 7 or 6 if they also have a blue gem. Only one player per color will sell their gems. Basically, the stores will buy the cheapest gems from the player who sells them for less. If you have gems needed for order cards, then you can give them in and win the victory points on that card. Last but not least, explode the dynamites. Basically, you remove the dynamite and all tunnel tiles surrounding it. Place those tokens in the buy pool on the board. That completes the first round. Players will do three rounds like this. The player with the most victory points at the end wins the game. 
It's a tile game at its core with a lot of strategy involved and it's really fun blocking others from getting their gems. It has great player interaction and it's played with one hour for experienced players. I don't like the town scoring element of this game though, for some reason it's just easy points and some players can just focus on that instead of gems to win. The rulebook has some good examples, is well written and the production is nice. If you're into tile games and strategy, you'll really like this game. Not much randomness in this game and it's all about skills. We're giving it a 6.5 on 10.